Alright my friends, today is the first day of Christmas stories, but I'm not going to do the diorama tonight. Because i got to make some room on my table. So tonight's book, the first book of the Christmas readings is going to be Frosty the Snowman. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, it all started with the snow, the first snow of the season. As every child knows, there are certain magic to the very first snow. When, the, when it falls on the day before Christmas, something wonderful is bound to happen. New book pages. Right. Tell them back to your seat, called the teacher. The snow can wait. I've hired Professor Hinkle, the magician, to entertain us for the Christmas party. Unfortunately, professional, professional, uh, profess, professor, professor. Hinkle, just about the worst magician in the world. And so I put an egg into my magic hat. Professor Hinkle Oh, acrobat and a viola, the egg had turned into a mess. Where's my rabbit? Hocus Pocus, where are you? He didn't know that his rabbit, Hocus Pocus, was hiding in the hat. The only thing this hat is good for is the trash can, said Professor Hinkle. The hat didn't stay in the trash can long. The hat with Hocus Pocus underneath of it hopped out the door. That was when the bell rang. The children were free for the whole Christmas holiday. Hey, look at the snow, cried the children as they ran outside. They worked together to build the first snowman of the season. Once the children had given him eyes, a nose, and a mouth, it was time to name him. How about Frosty, said Karen. Frosty the snowman. The children danced around Frosty as they sang about his button nose and his eyes made out of the coal. Come back here, you, cried Professor Ring Winkle, chasing Hocus Pocus. Suddenly, a gust of wind blew the hat on top of Frosty's head. Happy birthday, said the snowman. Karen gasped and said, the hat brought Frosty to life. It must be magic. Professor Hinkle heard that. He wanted the hat back. But it's not yours anymore, said <coughs> Sharon. This hat will make me millions, said the greedy magician. 
taking the hat back. Focus, focus. Felt that the hat really did belong to Frosty, so he hop, hop, hop back on the Frosty and the children as fast as he could and returned the magic hat. Happy birthday, said Frosty, <clears throat> as soon as the hat was placed on his head. Hey, I said my, my first word, I'm alive. What a neat thing to happen to a nice guy like me. The magic hat made Frosty dance around. The children cheered as Frosty began to laugh and play with them. There had never been such a wonderful winter day. Oh, come on, new pages. Oh, my goodness. Hope oh, I can get the page apart. <clears throat> when the sun peeked out from behind the clouds, Frosty exclaimed, Oh, I'm all wishy-washy. I'm starting to melt. The children knew they needed to take Frosty someplace where he could never melt. Like, like the chilly North Pole, they decided to go to the railroad station and find a train for Frosty. Let's have a parade through town, said Frosty. Come on, kids, follow the leader. All too soon, it was time for the train and Frosty to leave. I'll go with you, Frosty, said Karen. I'm sure I'll be back in time for supper. Karen, Frosty, and Hocus Pocus jumped on the refrigerator box car on the freight train heading north. No one saw President Hinkle sneak under the train car and hold on. Refrigerated, refrigerated box car was splendid way to travel. Splendid. That is, if one is a snowman and a furry coated rabbit. But for a little girl like Karen, it was just too cold. So when the freight train made a stop, Frosty got them all out. No one saw Professor Hinkle jump off, too. Frosty took Karen and Hocus Pocus to a wooden glen where they found animals decorating trees for their big celebration. They knew Santa Claus was coming that night. So Hocus Pocus spotted, spoke to the animals. They agreed to build a campfire to keep Karen warm. But it didn't take long for Professor Hinkle to catch up with their friends. Get on my shoulders, Karen, Frosty cried. Frosty, since he's made of snow, was the fastest belly whopper in the world. Soon he and Karen were sli sliding down the hill, <coughs> leaving the greedy Professor Hinkle far behind. At the bottom of the hill, a tiny greenhouse for growing tropical poinsettias for Christmas. It was a perfect place for Karen to stay warm. I see you'll melt in here, warned Karen. I'll only stay inside for a minute, Frosty assured her. But the nasty Professor Winkle caught up with them once again. 
He locked the door, trapping the friends inside. That night, Hocus Pocus led Santa Claus to the greenhouse to save Frosty. But by then, poor Frosty had melted completely. Don't cry, Karen, said Santa kindly. Frosty's not gone for good. You'll see he was made out of Christmas snow. You can bet your boots that when good jolly December wind kisses it, it'll turn into Christmas snow all over again. Just watch. Santa opened the door and when the wind whirled in and now Frosty was back. <coughs> Santa was about to place a magic hat on Frosty's head when Professor Hinkle shouted, Stop! I want that hat. I want it now. Santa replied, If you touch that hat, I'll never bring you another Christmas present. Go home right now. You're right. I'm very sorry for what I did to Frosty a hundred zillion times. Then maybe, just maybe, you'll find something in your stocking tomorrow morning. Mr. Hinkle was very sorry indeed. He ran straight home and started writing. Happy birthday, said Frosty once more. Karen was so happy to see her friend again. But now it's time to go home. Santa put Karen on his sleigh and promised her that he would take Frosty back to the North Pole with him. Karen hated to say goodbye to Frosty, but Santa said that Frosty could return every year with the magical Christmas snow. Frosty waved goodbye as he hurried on his way. He shouted and promised to return the following Christmas, and every year he did just that. Merry Christmas. Right, well, that was the first story for this December. Hope you enjoyed it. Until tomorrow when we do it again.